right? But I'm not, I'm not sure what that adds to this discussion. Uh, I think the conclusion is, you know, there's no concise conclusion. She just wants to uh, raise awareness to the issues. Well, the restoration, she claims, would be ideal, but since our knowledge is very uh, peculiar, as we don't have knowledge of the natural world and the way that the natural world actually operates, we're confined to science, which doesn't reason to the same aspects to what Mother Nature may. Well, I mean, there's this whole conceptual discussion about it. What, what is restoration? Well, because the whole question is, um, well, there, there are a few questions, but one of them is going to be, well, ought we to restore swamps and large lands? And if we decide we ought to do that, how do we go about doing that? Should we try to reduce the amount of, uh, should we try to reduce the mosquito populations in doing so? Well, there, of course, there's a technical aspect to that. It isn't even possible to effectively. But, I mean, this does come back to the question about, I mean, what is the goal of restoration? Well, she says, you know, kind of, I don't know if anyone here is into automobiles, but this is the only way I can really understand it. You know, we have a lot of classic cars that people attempt to restore to, but they are attempting to restore it to something that they don't have the ability to restore it to. But they restore a lot of functions. They restore what it represents. Um, and if you restore parts of nature, it may benefit some creatures, and it may uh, destroy others at the same time. Okay, so early on, so this is 246. Yes. Restoration to most laypersons suggests returning something to its proper state. However, given that we lack adequate information about any current complex ecosystem, much less of those 150, 1500, 15,000 years ago, it's not possible to restore a habitat in the sense of putting all the original components back in place. So, I'm not going to get the car just the way it was in the 50s. No, now you won't get nature the way it was, but at the same time, nature was also changing, and it continues to change. Where are we changing it to, and will it continue to change from where it stands? I was just going to say, this is not the notion of restoration we even want to focus on. And then we should go on to talk about how there are all sorts of invasive species and exotic species that just can't be extirpated from the kitchen. She also says that some creatures may not belong. If we try to uh, restore an environment where, for example, if one creature that was important in that environment ecosystem no longer exists, if we put something in there, for example, a wolf that tries to kill the deer, or what, you know, it doesn't serve the same purpose. It's not the same creature. It may actually create an imbalance, which, again, nature will take care of. And can we restore the function of marginalized? 
Professor, I, I actually think she was attacking uh, the general uh, idea, ideals of government to try to restore things for uh, the betterment of humanity and not for nature. Well, do you have a passage where she seems to be saying that? No, I don't. I just sense it in her tone, Professor. Yes, I, I don't think I got that sense. I mean, I, I, I think she would like to see more involvement uh, at all levels in terms of coming to a better understanding of the function of marshlands and the role of mosquitoes in question. But I think a big part of what's happening here is she's just calling attention to the fact that we don't know a lot about this. So I don't see it as some um, drive against the government. Well, not just against just general tradition of how nature is treated and saying that we can fix something. It's not necessarily broken. We have probably just done something. Yes, sir. It kind of goes with like, my second question that I wrote behind you. Uh, well, it gives numerous historical examples of removals of water in swamps or other human uh, inhabited areas. Not much seems to have changed since what if anything is being done? Uh, well, people are restoring uh, the swamps and stuff. Uh, yeah, but I mean, like, did she specifically give any uh, like, resolutions? Because I know this has been going on for centuries, obviously, it's this shown in the examples, but I mean, we, we don't seem to be doing anything different, right? No. I mean, people, uh, I guess it turns out to whoever has money can do what they want. And if you have something in your backyard, you can, do it in, you can create your own little uh, environment if you wanted to, if you had money. I guess that's about it. I don't know. I guess we just have to be careful. Humans are at large. So are mosquitoes. Everything else. She's talking uh, particularly about like mosquitoes and whatnot, I think. But do you think uh, she really wants to have us extrapolate from this that we need to be more cautious in our, you know, when we go about restoring different aspects of nature that we may have been striking and may have unforeseen consequences that we're not, you know, we're not properly investigating to kind of take a bigger picture of these things? Kind of not, not learning from history, yeah. you know, the fact that they drain the wetlands. Certainly. You know, or because that there's disease and then they're just putting it in there and not putting any sort of research into the thing that we now know brought the disease. You know, she's just trying to bring caution to. Yeah, I think one of the reasons she, she uh, said that there's not much evidence or not much, uh, what you call it, what's it called? I mean, there's no books or anything on mosquitoes, really. And she, she said it's so rare. It almost seems that... Uh, she just saying that we need to uh, look into this. Just kind of raising awareness. Say, hey, you know, the world doesn't end when we die. It uh, doesn't end when our children die, but it continues. And we need to be careful with our decisions. Because, again, like you said, we make drastic changes. Let's empty the swamp here and let's start having growing food here. And now we're doing the opposite. We don't know what the consequences may be. There may be a superbug that'll just come out of nowhere. And who knows, maybe they're, they are doing research, and I imagine they are doing research. I hope they are. So what sort of uh, an environmental view do you suppose uh, sanctions, uh, restoration sanctions? Um, I think it really depends on the individual. Well, I mean, so can you think of some authors that we've read who would agree this is a, a sound way of thinking about preservation, restoration? Um, I know I just, it, it seems, uh, I'm not sure how to answer that, Professor. Well, I mean, what about, what about Leopold? Does Leopold think that restoration is I, I don't know. Well, what is the, what was that fundamental ethical principle that the land ethic gives us? A thing is right when and what? Uh, was it intrinsically valuable, I believe. 
Uh, it was part of it, but that wasn't really said into words. Famous right when it tends to preserve the integrity, stability, and beauty of biotic humans. Wrong when it tends up. Well, so someone who thinks that's what responsible management of the environment consists of, is that going to be consistent with restoration projects? Well, most likely not. Is it? No. Um, I don't think there's enough uh, knowledge of whatever preserving something that you don't know. I would say maybe not because it by restoration, we're going to possibly disturb the biotic community by the mosquitoes and all the things we're going back to what it was, but what it is now will be disturbed. Well, no, we're not going back to what it was. The idea is there's maybe a, a problem about even knowing what it used to be like, right? So we're not even attempting to restore the sense of uh, making it just like it was X amount of years ago. The restoration is a rehabilitation. Uh, restoring the function of these marshlands. So it seems like this sort of restoration has in mind ideas about proper functions of ecosystems. And that seems to be consistent with the view of Mailbox, which says what's important here is the integrity and stability of this bio community. And it looks like if we're advocating restoration projects in a lot of sense, well, the success of the restoration is going to, the successful restoration project will have a stable wetland system. But well, maybe not, because then, let's see. Maybe now on 248, maybe the bottom of the left. Oh, yeah, maybe the book, right? So we talked about, uh, I think Adam brought this up at some point, uh, about how mosquitoes have kept human populations in check. So some notion of what the function of mosquitoes are in these ecosystems. And let's see, humans can and do value biodiversity, habitat loss, and much more, even when there is no apparent benefit for humans. Our values are not merely anthropocentric, but we can act on values beyond the narrowly anthropocentric. Some writers refer to these beyond anthropocentric interests as aesthetic interests, others refer to the intrinsic worth of nature. In different ways, the authors are discussing interests that are not solely human centered. When we say we desire to experience nature, even as restored environments, what most of us mean is that we desire to experience selected aspects of nature. We generally, we prefer not to experience dangers posed by nature. We prefer to have safe drinking water from the on back and not be concerned about dangers of water, either not human generated or human generated. We're generally will recognize the importance of predators in an ecosystem. We prefer that our families are not predators. A mosquito on the uh, light. Oh, mosquito eater. Uh oh, population control. No well, screens. So, so what she's saying here So I wonder if this point is going to be consistent with the view of vehicles. Like, well, look, we value experiencing nature, but we only like to experience the safe parts of nature. We don't want to feel the danger when we go out in and so maybe our restoration policies are limited, and we restrict them in such a way that when we restore a marsh, we try to minimize the possible damage to human beings. Well, that just seems all too uh, anthropocentric, uh, in my mind, Professor. We're only concerned about our safety. Well, so does Robot endorse that or not? Um, she definitely does.